Garnica is a small, sad, semi-industrial town in the heart of the Basque country. Here you won't find charming examples of old Basque or Spanish architecture, because Garnica was the site of the greatest atrocity of the Spanish Civil War. In 1937, the German Luftwaffe, siding with the nationalists under General Franco, blanket bombed the town, reducing it to rubble. But this barbarous act inspired Pablo Picasso to paint his greatest painting. I'm standing in front of a replica of the greatest painting of the 20th century. I don't want any argument about that. I don't want any of you saying that your six-year-old daughters could do better. They couldn't. The real picture is in Madrid, in the Prado the equivalent of the National Gallery. Garnica has to make do with that. Picasso, the painter of this picture, was working on a nude and not very happy with it. He saw pictures in the newspapers at the very end of April of what had happened here and immediately changed what he was working on. This enormous canvas, it is the same size as the picture you see behind me, suddenly became a matter of urgent, passionate involvement. While he was working on it, someone in Guernica sent him an object which changed his mind about one significant passage in the picture. He sent a little message with the optic saying, this was found in the ruins of Garnica. It belonged to a peasant. It is a glove, a workman's glove, with a gauntlet here. To prove the point, it is signed by Picasso. It is, as far as I know, the only real object signed by him. He kept it until three years before his death and then gave it to a friend of mine and I have inherited it. It is this hand there. You see the gauntlet shape here. You see this heavy thumb. You see these stumpy fingers. It is that hand. The receipt of this glove changed this picture, introducing this outstretched, agonizing hand. It's also something between Picasso and me that is now a link. I have something which meant so much to him that he, in getting it in 1937, kept it with all the paintings, all the drawings, all the etchings, everything he did, and prolific artist that he was, he kept it to within a matter of months of his death before giving it to somebody to whom he felt it had the right significance. I'm not here to give you a lecture on art history. I'm here to talk to you about pilgrimage and the nature of relics. But for me, this is a relic at least as significant as any I have seen on the journey, this is my relic. My Picasso. To me it is an object of infinite importance. It's not in a reliquary. And I don't know what to do with it when I die. Back on the road again, I'm heading towards another old industrial town, bigger than Garnica, but no less depressed. At least it was depressed until the Guggenheim Foundation decided to build a new art gallery here. The last time I drove through Bilbao, I didn't bother to stop. It was somewhere dull you passed through on the way to somewhere else. But now I see that Bilbao has been transformed. There are fashionable cafes and bars and smart new hotels. Over the past decade, Bilbao's fortunes have turned. 
And it's all thanks to this. The new Guggenheim Museum is a daring building that echoes Bilbao's glorious industrial past as a steel and shipbuilding town. It's like a great silver ship, moored in the river, the masterpiece of American architect Frank Gehry. It's one of those occasions when an architect really rises to the opportunity. A good architect, a solid architect, worthy, reliable, and suddenly given something so exciting his imagination sprang into top gear, and we got this. expect from the outside, except that it is so coherent that I couldn't believe there could be anything wrong inside, and I don't think there is. This is the most exciting combination of forms. It is like being inside sculpture instead of merely looking at the external skin of sculpture. There are extraordinary rhythms. There are sharp lines and soft lines. It is quite extraordinary. Everywhere one looks, the man is playing with space. I can't think of another building of the 20th century, because this is a 20th century building, that has this kind of complexity, this kind of subtlety, this, this extraordinary achievement. It is beautiful. It is marvellous to be in it. And the strange thing is that there isn't a work of art to be seen. This is the work of art. If there was nothing in Bilbao, nothing at all, this would do the trick. This would be the point of pilgrimage. I am not the first to see art galleries as the cathedrals of today. A quarter of a million people a year come to this building. Five million go to Tate Modern. An art gallery does precisely what a site of pilgrimage did in the Middle Ages. It changes the economy of the area in which it is. Bilbao was a run-down town with no importance and no interest and certainly no visitors. Build this and a quarter of a million visitors come from all over the world in no time at all. Convert an old power station into an art gallery and Southwark becomes a point of pilgrimage. It is the new pilgrimage. This is why we are looking at art galleries as well as cathedrals. Because what has happened in the past 20 years or so is that art has in its way replaced religion. Art was once the servant of religion. Now it has become entirely independent and an entertainment in itself. People come to this building in a mood of high seriousness to look at what are frankly intellectual jokes. Such a wonderful building can, like a cathedral, lift the spirit but unlike a cathedral, this building is godless. Its curators do not require us to be good. Art and religion do not do the same things. So it's time that I return to El Camino, the path, and to complete my journey to Compostela. <laughs> 